Welcome back. I'd like to go through the lecture notes, the introductory section and the section on math. So we have a definition here. What is data structures? The data structures is a lot of things. Here's a nice concise definition and then we can kind of break it out a little bit. So data structures is the study of the organization of data, the algorithms that rhythms that manipulate this data and the efficiency of these algorithms. Okay, so the simplest way that you could organize data is you could just have an open variable, right? You could just have integer x, you know, and then maybe another one and then another one, right? And that starts to get out of hand, so you might do the next complicated, the next most complicated thing, like you might have uh, an array. Okay, then, then you have a hundred elements all in once. So with single variables, your code can be a certain level of complexity. It starts to get out of hand, and um, you can't really do that much with it. So you, you might make an array. Once you make an array, there are certain things you can do to it, like you could sort it, you could search it, you could find the biggest element in it, you could find the smallest element in it. There's other things that you could do to it. And those algorithms would look a certain way because you've organized the data in this way. Okay, so there's a relationship between the way you organize data and the algorithms that work on that data. And let's take some sorting algorithms. There's different sorting algorithms, and some are faster than others, right? So there's an efficiency to these algorithms. So that's basically what data structures is. And you can kind of break it out into a little more detail, like um, it's a way to learn some analysis techniques that um, allow us to solve more difficult problems. Uh, you can think of it as a recipe book, and there's many algorithms that have been developed over the years, and why create those from scratch when we can study what's already been done. And a lot of people in the uh, discipline think about data structures as really the entry-level course for computer science. That is, there's a difference between computer science and programming. And programming at the basic level isn't really that difficult. You could teach it, my personal opinion is, you could teach something like a very simple C program or maybe Visual Basic at maybe sixth grade level, the level where students start to learn algebra. Um, you could teach even simpler languages before that. And really, I, my personal opinion, every high school student should have at least a little bit of programming before they graduate high school. I mean, we take them all the way up to what, some cases calculus. Well, if you're learning calculus, you should be learning, should be learning programming. In fact, if you're learning trigonometry, you should be learning programming. Anyway, I'm wandering a little bit, but that's kind of a definition of data structures. All right, so the main thing we're gonna deal with is this thing called time complexity, all right? So here's a nice concise definition. Time complexity describes the relationship between problem size and execution time size. So any small problem will execute quickly. Like if you have, you know, a bunch of, uh, if you have, let's say, 10 numbers and you're trying to find the biggest one, it doesn't matter how you do that. It, it, I mean, it does, but modern computers are so fast that for something, you know, 10 numbers, 100 numbers, it's going to, it doesn't matter what kind of algorithm you use, it's going to execute pretty quickly. But when but when you get to really big problems, like nowadays the data sets that are being collected are gigabytes and gigabytes, terabytes, you know, petabytes. There's just huge quantities of data that's being collected. When you go to Walmart and buy a tube of toothpaste, that transaction is put into a database. So there's just millions and billions and trillions of bytes of data growing all the time. So it's just an idea. Here's the basic idea of time complexity. You, you could create a graph of two things. You could create the size of the problem and the time that it takes. So let's say your, your problem is like, takes this long, however that is. It could, the size of the problem, it could be 10 like you know, data elements, something like that. And let's say it takes a certain amount of time, okay? Now what if you double the size of that? Does it double the time? It might, right? It might double the time in which we'd say that that was uh, proportional or linear sometimes we say, straight line. 
but it might it might have it too. It, it's it's possible that uh, adding more data could make the thing execute quicker. It's uh, no way that never happens, but it could be it could be it could execute less than double. It could execute uh, for doubling the size of the problem. It could say take um, uh, and half again, and then maybe half again bigger than that, and then half again bigger than that. So it could, the shape of the curve could look like this. It's possible. I guess it goes through one and then like that. Or it could take way more than, uh, so you double the size of the problem, it could take way more than double, it could take quadruple. So the, the thing would look like this, right? So this is basically, we use this notation called big O, and this is linear time, and maybe it could have n squared time, or maybe it could have big O of log n time. Okay, so we're interested in how the execution time changes with the size of the problem, right? As the problem gets bigger, how long, how much longer does it take for the algorithm to execute? And why do we care? Well, some algorithms grow so quickly that you make the problem a little bit bigger, they just take so much more time that maybe for practical purposes, they'll never finish. We call that intractable. This is intractable. And there's time complexities like n factorial or n to the n, things like that are, are basically in, um, intractable. That is, they take so long to execute that nobody will be, nobody you know will be around when this thing executes. You know, it could be thousands of years or something, millions of years for some of them. So that's, um, that's one reason. Um, some algorithms, just to summarize, some algorithms just take so long to execute for large data that it's impractical to use them. Okay, many algorithms, maybe you're, you're not going to run them on data sets that are that big or you're not going to, uh, they're not, they don't have a, a really bad time complexity, but it's still nice to know what the time complexity is. It's still a good measure of overall efficiency. And so, so we need measures of, of things so that we can, we can judge our code and say this is good code, this is bad code, and, and uh, so, so that's another uh, uh, use for time complexity is just as a measure of a well understood or a standardized measure of how good your code, goodness, it's a measure, you know, measure of goodness. Oops, goodness, you know, for code. Kind of you can think of it that way, measure of goodness. All right, that's the basic idea of time complexity and what this course is about. We're going to look at a lot of different algorithms, uh, uh, like a recipe book type approach. Look at algorithms that have been done in the past, analyze them, determine their big O, talk about are they good, are they bad, that kind of thing. All right, before we do that, we have to go to some mathematics review, just some basic math that's going to come up throughout the course, okay? So, um, first thing is a logarithm. So, the definition of a logarithm is kind of the inverse of an exponent. So if you have an exponent x to the a equals b, uh, then the logarithm is the inverse. That is uh, log x of b equals a. So um, a is the exponent to which you raise the base x in order to get b. All right? And x, the base, right? x is the base raised to an exponent. The base is always 2 in computer science. That is, if we just say log it's assumed that it's base 2. Unlike regular math, although I like to think computers are now regular math and all the other stuff is just like ancient math, but in regular math, I guess they still call it that, they assume base 10. But we assume base 2 because, you know, we're, we're, we're modern. All right, anyway, just a little joke there, that's all. Just joking around. Old math is good math, too. All right, so we have a couple of things we got to talk about that will come through, um, that we'll see. And the, this, the purpose of going over this math is just to um, have a vocabulary, you know, have some examples that we can use throughout the course to talk about code and algorithms and things. All right, so there's something called an arithmetic series. So there's this little sigma symbol, uh, the sum of elements i as i goes from 1 to n would just be like this. If i goes from 1 to, say, um, to n, then it would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way out to n. 
So it turns out that we have a formula for this. It just so happens there's a, there's a formula for this series. Okay, and uh, this is it. So you, you could so you could just add up the first n numbers and get the answer, or you could calculate this formula. So here's an example. So let's say the sum of uh, i, the arithmetic series, uh, for i, uh, just the sum of i, as i goes from 1 to 3, would be 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is, which is 6. Okay, so you could write a loop and count, and you know, count the iterators, right? 1, you know, increment, add it, increment, add it, get 6. You could do that. Or you could plug in this uh, 3, you could use this formula. If n goes to 3, you could plug in the 3 here and here, so 3, 3. You, you work this out and it's 6. So the, the top example in code, okay, is would be this. You just have a, a loop and i would be the iterator and going to uh, going to 2, or going to 3 rather, going to 3, and then you're just summing these guys up in the loop. So how long does this loop take for three elements? It takes, it takes three, right? How long does it take for six elements? It takes six. So this is six time and n size. So six time units. We don't really care about what the time units are. They could be microseconds, you know, picoseconds. But to do three elements takes three units of time. And the, to do six elements takes six units of time. And, and it's just going to be that nine would take nine. So it's going to be a straight line. So basically, if the size of the problem doubles, the time doubles for this algorithm here. Right? Because the counter is just, uh, this stuff on the inside is just executing. For this, in this case, it's executing three times. If you made n six, it would execute six times, this stuff inside. If you made n, 9, it would execute 9 times. So this has what we call big O of n, time complexity. It's like, not great, but you know, okay. It's not terrible. All right. Um, but there's an important thing to note here. We have a formula for this series. So imagine, imagine n were um, a million. Then how many times would this loop go? This, it would go a million times, right? This sum in here would go a million times. That starts to take a while. Or if this were 100 million, this loop would go 100 million times, right? To do the loop, to do this loop execution, the first, uh, the first uh, sum method for calculating this series. But we have a formula. How long would this formula take for 100 million? If n were, instead of 3, if n were 100 million, how long would the formula take? Well, it'd just, it'd just be a couple of arithmetic operations. It'd be 100 million plus 1 times 100 million divided by 2. It's like an addition, a multiplication, and a division. It's three operations. Right? So this series, using a loop, would take a long time to execute for large n. But this same series, using a formula, would take three operations to execute. So that's really important to keep in mind. Like a lot of algorithms are known and they're, they may have a high complexity, but there could be a much better time complexity. There could be a formula. You can't do any better than a, I'm calling this a, a formula. You can't do any better than just a two, three calculation type thing. So that, that's a, a, a concept that's going to come up. The idea of um, an iterative algorithm and, and then it's a, there could be an equivalent formula. Maybe it's known, maybe it's unknown, maybe it's proven theoretically to exist, but we don't exactly know what it is. There's all kinds of things like that. All right? So that's an arithmetic series. Another thing we're going to see is a geometric series, which grows faster. Okay, so um, here's a geometric series. Uh, the sum as i goes from 0 to n of a to the i. So that would be a to the 1, a to the squared, a cubed, plus 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 plus, plus all the way to a to the n. 
So there happens to be a formula for this as well. There just happens to be. The point I'm making is there are some kinds of series for which there is no formula. But the two we've looked at now, arithmetic and geometric, that there happens to be a formula. Um, so you could do this in code, or you could do this for a specific n. So let's say n was 3. What would it look like? It'd be um, the sum as i goes from 0 to 3 of 2 to the i would be 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed. So, uh, or 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is 15. So you put these into the formula. Um, where you just make um, um, a is 2 and n is or, um, n is 3 so it's going to be uh, you know 2 to the 2 to the, 2 to the 3 plus 1 over uh, 2 minus 1 it's going to be this you work it out it's 15 okay so once again this would take a while in code using a loop this expression version of the of the uh, problem would just would just be a couple of operations, be an, an addition, an exponentiation, another subtraction, uh, another subtraction, a division. It'd be what five, six operations, something like that. For for a very large n, this would take a loop. It executes very large times, but this formula would be just a few operations. So the uh, this iterative version, this loop version, would look like this in the code. So it's got a loop to do each term, 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 and then it's got an inside loop to do the exponent. Okay, so the outer loop executes, then the inner loop executes inside, and it has a, it has a worse time complexity. It's going to look something like this. That is, as the problem gets bigger, the time grows faster than the size of the problem. So this is a bad, you know, bad, bad time complexity. And we'll talk about this in detail about why that, why that is a little bit later. Um, yeah, so I've just presented two series here, an arithmetic, an arithmetic series somewhere, an arithmetic series and a geometric series and the uh, The uh, geometric series has a worse time complexity. That is, as the pro size of the problem gets bigger, the time to execute that problem grows much faster for the arithmetic for the uh, geometric series than it does for the arithmetic series. And the other concept is that sometimes there's formulas for for series. Is it's the plural of series, series. Um, there's formula that execute in much much fewer. And um, yeah. So that's most of the uh, introductory concepts for this this course and the very basic math that we're going to see. Okay. Thanks.